Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I want to spend some time on today is from John, the 17th chapter, where Jesus prays for his disciples and says, My prayer is not for them alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent them. As I think a lot of you already know, this has been kind of a special week for me, becoming a grandpa for the first time. So very exciting. Becky and Clay had their baby on Thursday, um, and they named their baby Philippa Noel Bowie. You know, for a thousand years, I've been visiting with every expected mom, putting my arm quietly around them and saying, Philip is a good name. <laughs> Somebody finally listened. <laughs> They're calling her Pippa. <laughs> As I think about this week and seeing my daughter and my son-in-law cradling their newborn, I think of that image of, of a young mom, a newborn child. It's not hard to think of in our church because we've seen a lot of newborn babies recently and a lot of little ones here and there. But my mind conjures up a lot of different things. Sometimes it's that image of a mom hold your baby. Sometimes it's the image of a mom quieting a shrill cry or, or, or nursing their baby at three in the morning. Sometimes I see them rocking their baby to sleep, maybe softly humming a lullaby. Almost no matter what I think of, I can't really come up with a picture that doesn't have a certain amount of beauty to it. The image of a mom and her child give us a warm feeling inside. And I think it has a lot to do with one special quality of motherhood. Dependence. The child is dependent upon his mother or her mother for virtually everything. So small, so innocent, he couldn't survive without the love, care, and commitment of his mom. And in a different way, the mother is also blessed by her child. Oh, she doesn't need the child in order to survive, but that she does feel a special attachment to the child. She is born to him or her. And it makes her happy to do things for her child. She feels joy as the child snuggles in her arms. And there is a special feeling inside that she can only have when she cares for her newborn. Dependence. Giving. The mother gives food, clothing, care, and protection, as well as love. And the child returns with a giggle or smile, or simply the opening of his or her eyes in a, or a contented sleep. Infancy and motherhood. A beautiful picture indeed. What seems sad, however, is how quickly we seem to lose the beauty of that mother-child dependence. I'm not saying that we should all somehow revert back to our childhood and have someone wait on us hand and foot. That would be silly. What I am saying is that it doesn't take very long for us to be bombarded with internal feelings and external pressures telling us it's bad to be dependent. Independence, individuality, self-actualization, assertiveness training. They're the buzzwords of our age. Written all over the place, and the philosophy gets built right into us. Don't need anybody, and they shouldn't need you. Be self-sufficient. Do whatever you want on your own. Leave me alone, Mom. Don't give me your opinion, Dad. Let me make my own decisions. I have my pride.
privacy. I need my space. I need my freedom. And slowly but surely we build a wall around us that not only keeps everyone out, but also keeps us in. We don't want people to see that we need them to love and care about us. We don't want people to see that sometimes we need help in knowing what is right. We don't want people to see that we might make a, a, a mistake or that we might need support. People might think we're weak. People might think we're failures. And so we block them out and hang alone, refusing to receive from them and refusing to give of ourselves. Simon Garfunkel from the 60s expressed it this way in their famous song, I am a rock, I am a rock, I am an island. I build walls, a fortress deep and mighty that none may penetrate. I have no need of friendship, friendship causes pain. It's laughter and it's loving I disdain. I am a rock, I am an island. And you know what? This isn't just a young people thing. Adults, too, can get wrapped up in the daily routine, and the world can begin to revolve only around us as we block out others. Don't let them in. They might belittle or hurt you. They might question you or challenge you. Block it up. Block it up inside. And even our spouses and friends and children can be shut out. not unlike the mother-child picture we discussed earlier. Hear the words of Jesus as he prays for his people. Again he says, that they may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Unity. Oneness. Dependence upon God and dependence upon that's the picture that our Lord lived, and that's the picture that our Lord sketches for us, and that's the picture that our Lord makes possible for us as his people. Just like a young mother gives her all to her newborn child despite his response, and waking up at 3 a.m. so that he might be fed, changing his clothing, quieting his cries, so also our Lord Jesus gave it all for us. Did it matter that we failed to live the kind of life we should? It didn't matter that we persecuted his very messengers. It didn't matter that we rejected his teaching and ministry. What mattered was that we were his children and he loved us. He longed for us to be freed from the chains of our sin, and he wanted us to live a joy-filled life with him forever and ever. We had a wall around us clinging to our independence, clinging to our self-sufficiency, a wall of greed, a wall of selfishness, a wall of pride, a wall of lust and envy. We wanted nothing to do with him, but we cared only for ourselves. And that wall, like the Great Wall of China, separated us from the love of our Creator. But our Lord Jesus did not sit idly by and say, oh well, guess I can't do anything. Oh no, he stepped in. He stepped in and got involved. He made himself vulnerable. He opened himself up. He shared his love and he shared his very life with us. And so by giving instead of taking, giving to the point of his own life, rising from the dead, ascending into heaven, he broke down that wall, ripped it out stone by stone, brick by brick, because that's how great his love was for us. 
His love could blast away selfishness. His love could break away jealousy. He can rip out pride and greed and lust and envy. His death was the wrecking ball. His love was the dynamite. And now that the, the wall is gone between us and God, we as his children can love again and respond again. He is alive, and just as the Father is in him, so he is in us. And that means that he takes these self-centered hearts and fills them up with concern for other people. He takes those stubborn, independent minds and helps us realize that other people can help us too. We are not an island. We are a body. We are not an island. We are a family. And each of us has special gifts, talents, and abilities. We need our God. And we need one another. Look around you and see the people of God. That's your family. Those are your loved ones. Serve them, love them, help them, support them, encourage them. Be their friend. Be their fellow church member who wants to do everything they can to make their life easier. Closing, I'd like to share a story with you today. The story about a man who was taking a walk in medieval England. As he was trotting along, in front of him there was a large portion of land where many people were working. He was curious. It was obviously a building project, but what could all these pot men possibly be erecting on such a large piece of land? His curiosity would not let go, and so he walked up to a man by a large pile of stones. And not wanting to appear too nosy, Coyly asked, What you doing? The man squawked in a rough, rough tone, clearly busy. Laying stones, what's it look like? Put off, but still curious, the man walked to another mason, and in the same way asked, what you doing? The worker looked up and then down in a drab and matter-of-fact tone said, building a pillar. But still he didn't know the answer, so he decided to try once more. Walked up to a third stone worker and said, what you doing? The worker, however, looked up excitedly and made an image with his hands. We are raising up the most beautiful cathedral you can possibly imagine. Let me tell you what it's going to look like. And he went into grand detail about the woodwork, the statuary, the columns, the candles, the stained glass windows. His excitement resounded because he saw himself not as an individual mason, but as a part of the whole cathedral building program. Laying stones, building a wall, and becoming a part of the grand scheme. That's what we are, my friends. In our families, in our church. A body that works together, that loves one another, cares about one another, encourages one another, and needs one another. And so the walls we build we don't build around ourselves to hide ourselves from others. The walls that we build are the walls of the house of God to celebrate his love for us eternally. May God bless each of us as we rejoice in the families he has given us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand.